100 smartest people in New York. Great honor, I thought. But in all fairness, I have to admit that Madonna also made that same list. And next year, Lady Gaga is going to push me off the list entirely, they tell me. Now today, I'm going to talk about the future of the mind. Lick by lick. How to go down on a woman to... Remember, it's always dangerous predicting the future. Let me quote from that great philosopher of the Western world, Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra once said, quote, Prediction is awfully hard to do. Lick by lick. How to go down on a woman to and have her begging for more. Lick by lick. How to go down on a woman and have her begging for more. Copyright 2007 by Theromantic.com. All rights reserved. No part of this publication may be used, reproduced, or transmitted in any form or by any means without the written permission of the author. If you believe that you received or purchased an illegally produced copy of this ebook, please contact the publisher at www.theromantic.com slash contact.htm. To read about our other books, go to http colon slash slash www.theromantic.com slash books.htm or look at the back of this book. Disclaimer and terms of use agreement. The author and publisher of this ebook and the accompanying materials have used their best efforts in preparing this ebook. The author and publisher make no representation or warranties with respect to the accuracy, applicability, fitness, or completeness of the contents of this ebook. The information contained in this ebook is strictly for educational purposes. Therefore, if you wish to apply ideas contained in this ebook, you are taking full responsibility for your actions. The author and publisher disclaim any warranties, express or implied merchantability, or fitness for any particular purpose. The author and publisher shall in no event be held liable to any party for any direct, indirect, punitive, special, incidental or other consequential damages arising directly or indirectly from any use of this material, which is provided, as is, and without warranties. The author and publisher do not warrant the performance, effectiveness or applicability of any sites listed or linked in this ebook. All links are for information purposes only and are not warranted for content, accuracy or any other implied or explicit purpose. 3. Table of Contents. I. Forward. 2. Chapter 1. Ground Rules A. Shower Fresh B. To Orgasm or Not to Orgasm. C. Health Risks D. Play It Safe. 3. Chapter 2. Yes, Learning the Parts is Important A. The Mons Pubis B. The Front Commissure C. The Clitoral Shaft D. The clitoral hood E, the frenulum F, the labia minora and labia majora G, the vaginal opening H, the forchet I, the perineum, IV, Chapter 3, Getting Ready A, Waxing, It's Not Just for Brazilians Anymore B, Make Sure You're Shaven too. C, Cunnilingus During Menstruation 4, V, Chapter 4, Make Her Want It, Bad, A, The Biggest Difference Between Men and Women B, I've Wined, Dined and Romanced Her, Now What, C, don't forget to start slow. D. Female erogenous zones 101. V. Chapter 5. Don't head for the clitoris, yet a. Warning. Never blow air into your partner's vagina. 7. Chapter 6. Think outside the box a. Sweeping B. Circles C. Suction D. A B C Z. Vacuum F. The messy eater. 8. Chapter 7. Additional techniques a. Using your hands B. The G spot C. Using toys. X. Chapter 8, The Essence of Change A. Legs Up B. Legs On Bed C. Backwards D. Doggy Style E. Sit On My Face 5. X. Conclusion. Lick by Lick. How to go down on a woman and have her begging for more. Forward. It is a well-known fact that oral sex is extremely pleasurable for a man. The irrefutable evidence permeates our society from sexual innuendos in commercials to adult films and pornography. It is true that a man will not let a woman who gives great fellatio go far and for many men, oral sex is the cornerstone of a sexual relationship. A 
Unfortunately, oral sex for women called cunnilingus doesn't get quite as much publicity as fellatio does, in spite of the fact that it is more pleasurable for a woman to receive oral sex than it is for a man. 6. Come again. Yes, you heard right. The amount of pleasure experienced by a woman when receiving oral sex is much greater than the pleasure experienced by a man receiving oral sex. How is this possible? The surface area of a man's penis greatly exceeds the surface area of the clitoris, therefore oral sex for a man must feel better. Well, not exactly. Packed into the tiny little clitoris in a woman's vulva is a whopping 8,000 nerve endings. We guarantee that isn't something you learned in sex ed. Yes, the clitoris has almost two times the amount of nerve endings than a penis does and is the most sensitive part of the human body both male and female. If the clitoris is such a big deal, how come we haven't heard much about it until now? This is where a little bit of psychology comes into play. It is a woman's nature to give and give without ever receiving. It is unlikely that she will ever ask or tell you that she would like to experience cunnilingus, women just aren't wired that way. She may give clues like freshening up down south or making suggestive comments, but since men take such a direct approach to everything, it is quite possible that he will miss these clues entirely. 7. Rest assured, however, that nearly all women love to be gone down on, for both physical and emotional reasons. The physical, of course, is obvious, by directly stimulation her clitoris with a hot, wet mouth, she will most likely experience more powerful, intense and longer lasting orgasms than with intercourse alone. Emotionally, during cunnilingus the woman is the center of attention, nothing matters more at that moment than her pleasure. Many women today balance both careers and a family and in between her screaming boss and putting dinner on the table, there isn't much time left. For her. For a woman, cunnilingus is like a mini vacation where she can finally forget her daily routine and nagging to-do list while her body releases the pent-up tension from the day. A study involving 98 married women as described in Sex, a man's guide, ranked cunnilingus or oral sex as the most enjoyable and gratifying sexual act, 82% of these married women feel that receiving cunnilingus outranks any other sexual act. Only 68% of the women felt that intercourse was very pleasurable and believe it or not, these women experienced an orgasm only 25% of the time. That means that out of every four times these women engaged in a sexual act, only once did they reach orgasm. During oral sex, however, these same women reached orgasm a whopping 81% of the time. There's solid proof that cunnilingus is the most surefire way to give a woman an orgasm. In a similar study by Kinsey and Masters and Johnson, only 7.7% .7 of women did not reach an orgasm if their husbands spent more than 21 minutes engaging in foreplay and oral sex. 8. Okay, so we've made our point. Cunnilingus is the ultimate form of sex for a woman, hands down. You can go down and your partner before you enter her, or you can surprise her and make cunnilingus the main event for an evening. Either way you choose to do it, know that you will ultimately strengthen your relationship and get closer to your partner than you ever were before. So let's get started. Chapter 1, Ground Rules We've established that women enjoy cunnilingus, but that most women don't ask for it or let on that they've thought about it or want it. So how do you initiate it? Again, a little knowledge of the way a woman's mind works can go a long way when learning how to best perform cunnilingus. We know you're anxious to get to the techniques section and try them out, but you can't jump the gun here. Most women are self-conscious. This we know from the, do I look fat in this outfit, question. Before going down on your partner, you must first break this barrier or she will never let you in between her legs. This is the easy part, compliment her. Do it gradually, over a period of time and make sure the compliments are genuine. Show interest in her and her activities and pay a little more attention to her. In this way, you are setting the stage for success. When your partner's emotional needs are met, she will open up to you sexually. 9. You must also examine any inhibitions you have about cunnilingus as well. It's great if you're completely gung-ho about the idea, but the reality is that most men aren't. 
Unfortunately, locker room stories about funny sights and smells have scared many men out of the water. If the idea of cunnilingus does bother you a little, try to isolate exactly what about it bothers you. Most of the time, if it's just a hang-up or two, the situation can be resolved with little or no effort. For example, if the idea of being so close to a woman's vulva that you can see the hair follicles unnerves you, simply turn out the lights. There's an excellent chance that your partner will be more comfortable in the dark as well. She's not at the doctor's office, you know. Shower fresh. Although all women and their partners are different, there are a few things that you can both do to make the experience more pleasurable for both the man and the woman. Some men prefer a woman's vulva to have no hair and others prefer a bush. Both are fine and we'll go into more detail about pubic hair later in the book. But we can almost guarantee that everyone appreciates a good shower. If you haven't figured it out already, women are very sensitive about their natural smell. This obsession probably started around the time that women as fifth graders were made to watch the Mom, I Don't Feel So Fresh video when learning about their coming menstrual cycles. Fortunately for you, most women who know they're going to experience cunnilingus will make sure they are very clean beforehand. You will probably not have to introduce the subject at all, it will most likely already be taken care of, out of the fear that her natural smell doesn't smell all that great. 10. Of course, under normal circumstances, her down there smell is usually just fine. Most women's sensitivity and self-consciousness about her natural smell is largely unfounded. Some women, of course, have a stronger smell than others and if you're new to cunnilingus which reading. This book suggests you or you may need to take some time to adjust to her natural smell. After some time after both you and your partner are more comfortable, she may not even need to shower beforehand at all. This is entirely a personal choice. However, especially in the beginning, a shower beforehand will ultimately make both you and her more comfortable and receptive to cunnilingus. There may be a time or two in which you don't feel comfortable with her natural smell at that moment and wish your partner to shower beforehand. She may be comfortable not showering. In this case, it is best that you approach the subject of showering delicately so as not to offend her. A suggestion for a shower for two will almost always do the trick. Keep in mind that you don't want to ask outright, so you may want to say something like, I would love to wash your hair in the shower to help you relax, or, massaging my soapy hands into your breasts would really help turn me on, would you like to shower with me? More than likely, your partner will happily oblige. You can even help turn her on and get her yearning for your mouth on her vulva by erotically stroking her vulva with a soapy hand. Get creative. To orgasm or not to orgasm. 11. Although cunnilingus is quite possibly the easiest and most direct approach to getting your partner to reach orgasm, this may not necessarily happen. Don't stress. Your partner will still enjoy your efforts a lot. As you become more and more experienced, your ability to bring her to orgasm will likely increase, possibly to the point where she orgasms every time you perform cunnilingus. This is the part where it is important to pay attention to her sounds and movements as well as discussing with your partner what she likes best during cunnilingus. If you're not comfortable yet asking her directly about her likes and dislikes, if you pay attention to what she's doing during cunnilingus you will most likely be able to figure out for yourself which movements bring down the house. Movements and sounds that will alert you to an impending orgasm is bucking and shuddering, particularly her legs, and she may be gasping for air or making a lot of noise or none at all. If you've ever given her an orgasm before, whether by cunnilingus or other means, you will more than likely be able to recognize when she is on the verge of a mind-bending big. Oh, once you start receiving cues that your partner is feeling really good, continue licking and sucking her vulva in the same manner until her orgasm. You can, of course, do a few variations, but most of the fancy tongue movements are for the beginning when she's really getting warmed up. Most women, like men, need repetition when they are close to bring them to orgasm. 12. If you and your partner are comfortable with talking to each other about cunnilingus, this can be of great help to a man. Men function best when given clear, direct instructions and if your partner is willing, she can tell you. 
exactly what she likes, where she likes it and when to do it. In this way, she can take control of her pleasure while still experiencing the wonderful and exhilarating feelings of cunnilingus. You can help her to be more open to expressing her likes and dislikes through conversation by asking her questions about what feels good. You can say in a hot, breathy voice into her vulva, do you like that? You will almost always be able to tell by the enthusiasm in her voice whether she truly likes the movements or not. And she may surprise you by just saying no. 13. If you sense that she does not like a movement, switch to something else and ask her if she likes that better. If nothing seems to be working, don't get frustrated. If nothing is feeling good for her, she will be frustrated enough for the both of you. Ask her gently to suggest a movement that she would like more and you can even ask her to demonstrate what she would like on your mouth. Keeping the lines of communication open is essential to her experiencing an orgasm. It is possible that she won't, however, no matter how hard you try. If you find yourself in this situation, try to bring her to orgasm using a surefire method that you know will work, such as using your fingers or intercourse. You may want to have a list of questions ready to ask though, because she may not be able to give you a blow-by-blow blow of exactly what she wants. Think of some questions beforehand so you can ask, and be sure to ask her gently what she would like. All you will need from her is a simple nod or shake of her head. This makes it much easier on her. She may not even know what she wants at this point and suggestions can help her figure out what strokes and techniques she likes the best. Some good questions to ask are. Do you like this speed? Would you like me to go faster or slower? Just a little faster or slower or a lot? Would you like me to continue moving or stop moving for just a moment? If you want me to stop, just give me the green light to go again. Is this stroke good? Would you like me to continue using this technique? Let me know if you'd like me to change it up a bit. Would you like harder or softer strokes, or do you like the pressure I am applying right now? If this is not the right spot, I would like you to show me exactly where you would like me to move to. Would you like me to move my tongue around in circles like this, or do you prefer another type of movement? Do you like long tongue strokes or short ones? Would you like me to use a little suction or possibly a little more pressure? Let me know what feels good to you or what would feel better. 14. There will be times in which she doesn't want to have an orgasm at all, but is simply enjoying your efforts. That's fine, but it is also another reason why communication is so important. If she is not going to experience an orgasm, it is important that she tells you before you become frustrated as well. Don't react harshly if she does tell you that she is not going to have an orgasm, or you sense that she is not because you may turn her off cunnilingus entirely or at least for a while. If you feel that her body wants to have an orgasm but for some reason it is just not happening, even if you've tried using your hands or intercourse give her the freedom to finish her orgasm for herself. She may want you to watch or she may need privacy. This is, of course, the last resort, but if you find yourself in this situation a time or two, don't be judgmental about it and just let her get her groove on. Health Risks Note Although sex, as well as oral sex can be performed by any man or any woman on anyone, we are assuming that those in a long-term, monogamous relationship are going to be the primary beneficiaries of the techniques outlined in this book. We will, however, go over safer oral sex and cunnilingus practices for those who choose to utilize these techniques outside of such a relationship or, if one's partner is at risk for transmitting STDs. 15. Okay, so here's the naked truth. When parts of your body are coming into contact with parts of other people's bodies, you run the risk of catching infections and diseases. Now while a handshake is almost perfectly safe, cunnilingus is not. You may have heard that it is more difficult for a woman to transmit a virus or infection to a man and to an extent, this is true. Both unprotected fellatio and unprotected vaginal sex carry more risks of sexually transmitted diseases than cunnilingus does. Keep in mind, however, that your mouth will be coming into contact with bodily fluids that may potentially carry a virus and your partner's vulva will be coming into contact with a mouth that may have a potential infection, therefore, it is better to be safe than sorry. 
Let's first examine what types of sexually transmitted diseases you may be at risk for if you perform unprotected cunnilingus in an unsafe environment, i.e. with a promiscuous partner. Bloodborne diseases are quite possibly the most serious of sexually transmitted diseases and include both HIV and hepatitis C. These are diseases that are spread only if one partner or the other comes into direct contact with infected blood. This generally only happens if both partners have an open sore or cut on both the vulva and the mouth. You will want to be very careful or avoid cunnilingus entirely if you or your partner have an open sore or cut on the mouth or vulva. These diseases can also be transmitted through hand to vulva contact if there is an open sore or cut on the hand as well. This is where communication is essential. If you are concerned about the risks of transmitting a blood-borne STD, discuss the risks with your partner and whether you both would be more comfortable avoiding cunnilingus and hand foreplay at that time whether you would prefer to practice safer sex. 16. Bacterial infections and other infections such as hepatitis A and B as well as chlamydia, gonorrhea and syphilis can also be transmitted through unprotected cunnilingus. While there are hepatitis B vaccinations and hepatitis A as well as the other infections can usually be treated successfully with antibiotics, there is no reason that these sexually transmitted diseases should be considered any less serious than blood-borne STDs. The practice of safer sex during cunnilingus and any other foreplay involving the vulva can reduce the chances of transmitting these types of infections. Perhaps the most commonly contracted sexually transmitted disease during cunnilingus is genital herpes, the reason for which is because genital herpes can be transmitted through simple skin-to-skin -skin contact of the affected area. Although they are two different types of herpes viruses, it is possible to transmit the virus to the vulva through a cold sore on the mouth or to the mouth with a herpes sore on the vulva. Although the herpes virus is dormant underneath the skin when an outbreak is not present, it is still possible to spread the herpes virus even if there aren't any open sores on the affected area. In the case of either a cold sore on the mouth or an outbreak of genital herpes on the vulva, it is probably best to avoid cunnilingus and other sexual contact during this time due to the fact that genital herpes is so easy to spread. Like other sexually transmitted diseases, however, genital herpes can also be practiced in a safer manner by taking proper precautions. 17. Play it safe. What are the proper precautions when practicing safer cunnilingus and other sexual foreplay involving the vulva? Well, they're no fun. Safer sexual contact during these activities involves lots of latex and frankly, most women will be completely turned off by the mere suggestion of a dental dam. Why use one then? Isn't this entire book about how to please a woman? If the woman is not going enjoy cunnilingus, why bother? Well, for starters, if she's that uptight about it, then don't bother. Just think of it this way, men wear condoms. Men hate condoms. Why do they wear them? That's easy, to keep from having children and contracting STDs. Most men will sacrifice the extra pleasure of intercourse without a condom considering the alternatives. Certainly, a woman should be willing to sacrifice some pleasure for the sake of keeping both parties safe and steady free If there are valid risks associated with performing cunnilingus for a particular partner and she will not oblige to practicing safer sex, again we say, don't bother. 18. But for those who are interested in practicing safer cunnilingus and other foreplay, there are a slew of tools that can be used at your discretion, you may even have some in your kitchen drawer right now. You may have heard of dental dams, you know, those little latex squares they use at the dentist's office to isolate a tooth. Those are great for using during oral sex, but adult toy companies have started making what they call, lollies, the same concept, but labeled specifically for oral sex. If you're in the heat of the moment and haven't got anything else on hand, plastic wrap will work just fine, see, we told you it might be in your kitchen drawer. If you haven't put two and two together yet, the dental dam lolly plastic wrap goes in between your partner's vulva and your tongue. Lubrication is very, very important if you're using any of these items during cunnilingus. Just imagine a very dry latex condom. Uncomfortable, right? 
Plus, having lube on the vulva side of the latex or plastic will mimic the feeling of a wet tongue more closely. Remember though, oil-based lubricant can cause latex to break down, always use water-based lubricant. 19. If you plan on engaging in foreplay of the vulva using your hands, you may want to consider using a latex glove if you're concerned about the risk of transmitting STDs. Truthfully, infections such as gonorrhea, chlamydia and the like generally aren't going to be transmitted through hand-to-vulva contact. If, however, there are open sores or cuts on the hands, fingers or vulva, you do run the risk of possibly transmitting or contracting an STD. Unlike with cunnilingus, using a latex glove does not hinder the pleasurable feelings in the least. In fact, when properly lubricated, a gloved finger may feel more heavenly than one with calluses and hangnails. Just keep in mind that a dry latex glove doesn't feel good, remember to use plenty of water-based lube. Although some of these ideas dental dams anyone, may seem like no fun, it really is better to be safe than sorry. A caring partner will happily oblige if you request protection for both her and yourself if you are concerned about sexually transmitted diseases. And if she doesn't happily oblige, you may want to reconsider sexual relations with this person entirely. The vulva in all its glory. A female anatomy lesson far removed from 8th grade 20. Chapter 2 Yes, learning the parts is important. So why do you have to learn about female anatomy to learn how... Especially if it's about the future. <laughs> well, I'm a physicist. We can predict the evolution of the universe billions of years from now. So let me quote from that other great philosopher. 